Hey everybody, happy Friday. Your girl Claudia Jordan here. We are back with a brand new episode of TGIF and we have a good show for y'all tonight. And I know y'all particularly love Fridays because that's when we answer questions from the soulmates, from people in the chat and our YouTube channel. So please put your little shady questions in the chat. In the last segment of the show, we're gonna get to as many questions as possible. Uh, so let's get into it now. Of course, we're here to break down some of the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax. I hope y'all got something to drink and get ready for this hot tea. Uh, please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? Uh, hey, what's going on, Claudia? Happy New Year. I know it was the second show we've done, but Happy New Year again. <laughs> Happy New Year. I'm super excited, Claudia. You know, next next week, hopefully, we're going to have some good stuff for the, uh, for the soulmates. Um, I'm going to be on the red carpet covering the Golden Globes for Fox Soul. So oh, hopefully, really? guys, okay. we'll be able to share next Wednesday. Uh, if not Wednesday, definitely by Friday, we get to share all the shenanigans that I was going through in uh, awards week uh, with Golden Globes. So okay, keep your eyes super, open. That's dope. That's super. What'd you wear? I know you wore something that acts. What you wearing? Something that acts. It's your Tuesday. Booty. You know me. I'm gonna I'm a figure out something. I'm, the booty I'm gonna be booty in. Tails. What'd you say? You know you have to wear a tuxedo, so I'm thinking about wearing tuck. I'm wearing a tail tails. You know a very formal, um, you know tails. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> what am I? Who am I talking to? Never mind. Speaking of tails, someone with a little fast tail. Please welcome Funky Daniva. What's up, Kim? Mm, not me, honey. I'm unlocking my better self. In this 2023, I'm a virtuous woman. I wear all white like Lisa Ray. I got all black today because my, my cleaners was closed. But I'm start wearing all white like Lisa Ray. And I'm going to be virtuous. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Have you um had any gentleman callers in the year 2023? Mm. See this bitch on here telling my business again. I ain't say anything. You, 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 All I said was mm. but don't clear your throat when she talking to me. Then. <laughs> I had one last night, Claudia. Okay. Oh, I was just taking a shot in the dark. So do tell. That, that was just that was just me making sure that this was the journey I wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I just is had this a, to make is this a potential? Sure before I fully committed, I just had to make sure. Was this a potential? Uh, potential? No, not at all. Mm -mm. No. Did anybody else kiss anybody at the stroke of midnight this year? Nah. Mm -mm. Okay. How about you? Of course. Can you put your animals in a cage in 2023? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. My animals try to get on camera. Your animals come to your house after dark. I'm sorry. My Ooh. bad. Ooh, you fired up. This uh, is the uh, favorite show. This is the favorite show. We have no bear. Let it go. <laughs> Okay, listen, um, I'm really looking forward to this year. So happy new year once again. I know it's you know it's not the first show back, but I am excited. Do y'all have New Year's resolutions? I know this is any New Year's resolutions. You know what? I I, I don't anymore, but I, I will say this, something that I do put in practice. Um, I think New Year's resolution, starting something cold turkey on January 1st is just kind of like lame and unrealistic. When I do know that there are changes that I want to make in the new year, I kind of start slowly dripping them into my life in November. So by the time January rolls around, it's not a hard sell and I can kind of just coast into whatever changes it is that I want to make. I did say for health purposes, I do, and I'm being serious, y'all, about unlocking my better self. I do want to drink a little less in the new year. <laughs> this is my serious face. Man, fuck both y'all. Okay. <laughs> Go on to the topics, Claudia, because I'm about to cut y'all ass out and quit this thing. Y'all, y'all are the most least supportive friends. We know you. We love you, right. but we know you. Should okay. be sipping on a cocktail in less forty nine minutes. And <laughs> <laughs> Go to the where the party at? Talk so about the Russian came over again. Mm. <laughs> Okay. You know what? Well, we wish you the best on Unlock You, but it's a, we, it, we, with all, in all seriousness, we Thank are rooting you. for you. We really are. Thank you. <laughs> we just don't believe you, but we are rooting for you. Okay. All right, yo, let's get into the show. We have a whole lot to talk about. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta cast member um, Tommy Lee claims Paula Abdul stole ideas from her sunglass line, Kilt Frames. Yo, take a look at this. 
That's crazy. You took my down to the look of my frames, like down to the cat eye that I speak so highly on. Like, y'all know how I've been pushing kill frames. Like, this is crazy, bro. I see this happen all the time to us, but I never thought, like, for real, for it to be me. Like, well, Paul Abdul's reps, Jag Entertainment, PR respond to Tommy's claims with the following statement. Your comment is outrageous. Paula has been a creative force in all realms for decades. This is simply another leap for her. She's never heard of you, met you, seen or known of you. They continued, I suggest you cease and desist from accusing or maligning her in any way, or you will be the one being sued. All right, y'all, what are your thoughts on Tommy Lee's claims? And do you think Tommy's frames are similar to Paula's. Al, let's start with you. What do you think? Does Tommy have a, a, a case? Absolutely not. But what she has a case of is knowing how to stay in the media. I don't know who Tommy Lee knows in the blogs, but that woman is in the blogs all the time, usually not so positive, but she stay in the blogs and she stay in the media cycle. Now, I had to go online because I looked at, she has two frames. They are cat frames, but Paula Abdul's frames look nothing like hers, in my opinion. And, and Paula Abdul's line is way more extensive, if not six is seven choices of frames in her line. And the thing that gets me the most is you don't have a patent on the technology because that patent of the smart glasses was discovered or, or filed and approved in 2014. So what is she talking about? Someone stealing from her. It's not possible. And the company that made both of their glasses says clearly you have the only frames like yours still in the market so what is she talking about it's quite clear that she saw an opportunity to ride a little press train and drag and get coverage and guess what it's worked but my opinion is you should take it off of social media young lady and take it into a courtroom because paul abdul got a lot of money and they're getting ready to sue you if you don't pipe down a little off topic before we get the Q's response. Did y'all see how Paula Boo tried to catfish us with that filtered picture of herself she put on the internet when she looked 12? Did y'all see that picture? Yeah, I did. No, I didn't see it. Uh -uh. I have to say, it. listen, we all like a little sn -n 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 -n, little snip, <laughs> little nip, tuck, a little zhuzh on the face, but she went really, really far. Okay, Q, what do you think about this case with Tommy Lee and the sunglasses? You know what, based on Tommy's tears, you know, Al, I don't think that this is an intentional media ploy for her. I honestly think she's legitimately hurt, but I also think it's because of lack of exposure and lack of understanding with private labeling. Um, you know, anybody who is remotely fashionable knows that cat eye design glasses are not new. I think Tommy might be uh, mistaken. And she thinks because perhaps she took a meeting with these people and they showed her, you know, maybe eight to 10 glasses that she could choose from from her line that perhaps she had, you know, license to the cat shaped eyed smart technology. And she's I don't know, because she's misinformed, she's thinking somebody's biting her style. Um, but Tommy. You know, I, I doubt highly Paula Abdul or anybody who reps Paula Abdul even knows who you are. I doubt that they even watch Love and Hip Hop. Um, and she's Paula Abdul. Like the statement said, she's been a force to reckon with for a very long time. Um, I'm sure the designers of those glasses probably only have eight to 10 shades you can choose from. And they're private labeling them, Tommy. So again, it's really a matter of who can market them the best. Um, just because Paula Abdul is doing the smart shades doesn't mean yours can't sell. KFC, Chick-fil-A, Church's Chicken, Popeyes. all sell chicken. Popeyes, they all sell chicken. You know what I'm saying? And it's just about how you market your chicken. In this case, it's how you market your glasses. So Tommy, don't, don't be defeated. Um, cat eye glasses been around a long time. Market your glasses, girl, and keep it moving. Yeah, well, no one can claim the cat eye glass has been around since the like the fifties. I mean, we all have. I think it's a. It wasn't that the combination with the the smart thing aspect of it, right? The hearing, mm -hmm. be able right. to take phone calls through your glasses, right? right. And, but and again, I, it's not like she drew that out. She right. took a meeting with them, and they said, "This is what we got." Right, right. And um, I, I had a company that I worked with before that did like a licensing deal with me, right? And I don't think I don't think Tommy was being malicious. It's, I think she went into this kind of new with this kind of in this in this position and they were like hey this is gonna be your line and then you see something like it there's a lot of things there's not a lot of new things out there right you know there's not a lot of new ideas out there so i can see how you could feel a way 
But if you really look into it, there's a lot of things that are very similar to each other. And it's unfortunate because if she does have a legitimate complaint, the person with the least amount of money and fame is definitely going to lose. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Like you're kind of like, yeah. it's, it's, it's an uphill Sad. battle. Uh-huh. Unless it was a patent now. If it's right. a patent, we got a whole different story, right? Because she went back to the registration of the patent. But, anyway. but I will commend her for trying to get out something outside of the lane of just being a reality star. And anyone that's trying to start a business, I'm, I'm with that. I think that's cool. All right, y'all. Uh, something that is not cool is the inconsistency in this story when it comes to media attention. So I'm so glad we are giving it the attention that it deserves. UFC president Dana White is under fire after a video surface of him slapping his wife on New Year's Eve. White addressed a domestic violence incident claiming they were both heavily intoxicated and out of control. But celebrities like D.L. Hughley are not buying it. D.L. wrote, uh, if Chris Brown, Bobby Brown, or Antonia Brown did what Dana White did, the media wouldn't stop talking about it. What can Brown do for you? Be white. Is this another example of white privilege? Q, let's start with you. You know, the audience that just blindly finds everything racist is probably going to take exception with what I'm about to say. I think it was wrong for DL them to make these comparisons about if this was Chris Brown, so on and so forth, because as far as I'm concerned, this was not a domestic violence situation. Y'all know I'm all equal opportunity when it comes to getting physical with somebody. She slapped that man first and he slapped her ass back. You know what I'm saying? As far as I'm concerned, that is self-defense, not domestic violence. So for them to try to conflate the two, I'm sorry, I don't see the comparisons. When it comes to the Chris Browns and all these other people, the assumption was that these men attacked those women out of the blue or just hit them for no reason. I'm sorry. Once you hit somebody first, all bets are off. When I watched the video, I don't see a man beating up on a woman or a man beating on his wife. I see a man hitting somebody back who hit him first. So I'm, 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 I, while I do think independent of this video, had that been Chris Brown or somebody, it would have got a lot of, uh, of whatever, whatever media play. I don't see this as one of those racial issues. She hit him first and he hit her ass back. Okay. That is true. That's what I saw in the video. I don't know if we saw, I don't know if we saw the whole tape, but I did see that in that clip. Al, what do you think? I completely disagree with both of you. First of all, we need to credit TMZ Sports for the video clip, number one. But number two, I think it's less about the hitting and less about the, and more about the media coverage. First of all, it's horrible for the CFO and president of such a huge organization worth billions to be hitting his wife in public, whether she hit him or not. Now, we're talking about media coverage. So the reason why they're not getting media coverage in the sports industry is because the UFC and Dana White has a $1.5 billion contract with ESPN. So that's why ESPN is not covering this type of stuff. Unlike in the instance where the black Celtics coach was being covered all through the media for sleeping consensually with a coworker. He's not married. She was. However, at the same time, we didn't cover Brett Favre for stealing money from Mississippi welfare. That's what we're talking about when it comes to black people doing stuff and getting coverage, white people doing stuff and not. The other example would be when the black quarterback, Deshaun Watson, got caught, got all that media coverage for, you know, sexual misconduct with masseurs. However, there was no media coverage for the $10.6 billion worth man, uh, Robert Kraft, who's the owner of the Patriots, who was caught and busted in a prostitute sting in, what was it, Vegas or Miami, one of those. Florida, Florida. That is what they're talking about in the unevenness of media coverage. And it's not right, and it's unfair. So I, you, you said you disagree with both of us, but I didn't say my opinion yet. I definitely agree that there's a, a, a double standard with the media attention, and I'm always quick to point that out. I, did, I was just trying to find a tweet, uh, a, some, a writer, I believe it was for ESPN said that they were all instructed to leave the story alone and not to write anything right. negative uh, about Dana White. So I think that is bullshit. Now there is, there are two issues here. There is a, the way black people are treated in the media opposed to white people. And uh, uh, then we can go into the who hit who first. Yes. We saw the video where she slapped him first and then he hit her. We saw that if it was, even if it was, even it, it, like, remember with the Rihanna, Chris Brown, there was a lot of people saying, oh, but I think Rihanna hit him first and she said something to him. It did not matter. The coverage was still the coverage. So in that regard, I will say I agree. But it's always like that. 
What? We we constantly see black people be strung up and made the example for months at a time, be the lead story, while white people's bullshit or, and and um uh their privilege. their drama gets their swept it gets swept under the rug, and we talk about it and then we move on. What were we gonna say, Funky? Let's go to commercial, and we'll finish when I get back. When we get back, <laughs> all right, we'll be back. Welcome back to TGIF. Now it's Friday. So one reason we thank God it's Friday is it's the day y'all get to ask us your questions. We will take the questions from the chat. Our producers will put them in my chat and we'll read them to each other and we'll have a fun little time. So go ahead and put your questions in the chat, all the things you want to know about the three of us. Okay, moving on. Uh, in leaked extract from his upcoming memoir, Spare, uh, Prince Harry claimed his brother, Prince William, physically attacked him in 2019 during an argument about his wife, Meghan Markle. Harry claims William grabbed him by his collar and threw him to the floor after calling Meghan difficult, rude, and abrasive. They are really spilling the little royal tea lately. Like, every day is a new story coming out. What do you think about Harry's claim, Dal? What do you think? Uh, listen, I just don't like it. I just don't like it. I'm sorry. I just don't think this is a, the way that it's rolling out doesn't feel right. Um, I, I just don't like the fact that Harry, Prince Harry and Meghan wanted all of this privacy before their marriage and during their marriage. And now that they're separated, they're spilling all the tea. Listen, we've all gotten in arguments with our brothers and sisters and fought over our disagreements with their significant others, their husbands and wives. I just feel like this is something that doesn't need to be publicly out there just to try to make the royal family look bad. I, I, I just something in my gut about this does not feel right, how the information is coming out, including the documentary. I've seen the documentary. I like the documentary. It was real well done. But at the same time, I just it just doesn't feel comfortable for me. OK, Q, what do you think about this? You know what? There's an African proverb that says the child that doesn't feel the love from the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. Um, and that's what Megan, I mean, that's what Harry is doing right now. He is burning down the village to feel his warmth. Um, Y'all treated him like an outcast. You know, I'm with Al. Three days out of the week, I don't like it. The remaining, uh, how many days in the week? Seven? The remaining four days, <laughs> the remaining four days of the week, I'm like, pay me for my pain. You know what I'm right. saying? So it, 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 it just depends on what day you catch yeah. me on. You know, uh, d does this feel malicious and in intent? Most definitely. Mm. It feels like I'm going to get y'all. On the flip side of things, you know what? I've lived in this man's shadow all my life. I was always second best. I was never going to be king. Then y'all had the nerve to cut me out, snub the love of my life, and tell me that my kids will not get a title. No, y'all hoes finna pay me for my pain. Right. That's I, cool, Q. That, I didn't even think about that. How brilliant is that, Q? So if he does paint the future king as this bad, you know, violent, bad, inconsiderate racist, it really could mess up that royal family. And this is a little nugget that could actually do that. I, I think it's easy for people on the outside to tell people to shut up. We don't want to hear it. You're being a hater. You're bitter. Uh, why are you spilling the tea? Until it happens to you, right? Like when it's your story and it involves a, a famous person or a famous entity or something, you know, you're really at a disadvantage. And they can really get away with doing a lot of stuff to you that's very foul. Remember, Harry was the one that was closest, I think, in my opinion, to his mother. And I think he really blames the royal family. And, the, and, and uh, like there's... There's a lot of feelings there about her death, you know, and I think that he kept it quiet for a long time. But him getting with this, you know, with Meghan Markle, I think it really he it was like the last straw for him. So I I, I don't know. I I know how it feels to be told to shut up. We don't want to hear it anymore. But if you're still in your pain, why can't you talk about it? And I do go back and forth with, OK, again. But then I'm like, I have to think about it. It's not me that it's happening to. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not any of us. It's none of us. that it's happened. So if it happened to you. You'd be like. I can tell my story. So I don't know. I, I do see them. It, it's trending every single day on Twitter. Whether it's anti Megan or pro, they go back and forth. So uh, interesting. Well, I guess we, we'll continue to report on this because I think this neither one of them are going away or staying out of the press. All right, y'all. A man in Indianapolis is calling out a local restaurant. I hate that I have the same last name. Jordan's fish and chicken sandwiches after finding out that his food was being served straight from the kitchen floor. So nasty. I'll take a look. That's crazy. 
Hey, stop. Hey, do? A health department inspector acted on complaints Monday morning and posted the suspension of the store's operating license on the front door of business. What are your thoughts on the restaurant serving food from the kitchen floor? And I do, I did see, I know y'all saw people walking over the food with their shoes. So, you know, little particles can drop down right into the chicken, the fish. And someone said they saw a mouth. I didn't see it, but I don't know. Al, what you think? Well, you know, if from first look, I thought it was extremely gross. I thought it was nasty and I thought that they should be closed down. But as I dug deeper and, and started to, to read the reports, what we found out was that all that food, the reason why it was on the floor or on floor level was because they had com just completed a huge catering event. And before they could dispose of the food, they brought all the food back into this area, which is not the kitchen where the food is cooked, but adjacent to the kitchen until the staff have had time to dispose of it. Now that that is exactly what the reports say. However, this restaurant 100% in the last five months has had the inspectors come and write complaints and violations, um, violations to code as it relates to hot grease and stuff. And they have had 10 violations, including one family of five who have said that they've gotten sick from the food. But as it relates to the level and where this food was and them stepping over it and all that stuff, that's the reason that they gave us. And to me, that makes 100% sense because if you watch the video, there were plenty of other counter space that could have been utilized instead of just having it on the floor. Okay, Q, what do you think? I call BS and here's why. I, I've got a lot of friends in Atlanta that own restaurants. And if the intent was to dispose of the food, typically your dumpster is behind your business and typically you pull your catering van up or your truck to the back door. Why bring the chafing dishes into the restaurant just to walk them back outside to throw the food in the garbage? It would seem to me if that you were going to dispose of the food, that it would have been more efficient to just take the chafing dishes straight from the van and dump the food in the garbage or bring a garbage can outside. You're doing double work. And I'm sorry, those them was full pans of rice, full pans of broccoli, full pans of whatever, whatever. The story sounds like a great cleanup story, but I know the way people think and people operate, they like, shoo, we got this full pan of rice that the, that the, the Williams party already paid for. And we only dug into it one time. Child, we gonna put this in the cooler. And we gonna serve this shit in the morning. Okay, had them people not get got caught out, they was gonna reserve it. I don't know, Q, that, that's pretty nasty. Um, Listen, listen. <laughs> people do nasty stuff to food. I, I, I used to work in the movies, and I know stuff that we, I've seen. Uh, soul, soul mates who work in food, please drop that in the comments and let the people know what really go on in food. And Claudia, while we talk about the comments, check the chat because we got a special comment out there that you need to address. Uh oh, which one? The one from Thomas World. Thomas World. Thomas World. Thomas World. Oh, oh he says, "Oh my oh, gosh, oh. I've never caught a live show." Hey, Claudia, shout me out. Love you. Hey, Thomas World, thanks for watching us and congrats on catching the show live for the first time, which is crazy to me that people still don't know. It's 5 p.m. on the West Coast, 8 p.m. on the East. Tell your friends and hop in the chat. Thank you, Thomas World. We appreciate you. All right, y'all, moving on. Oh, Julia Fox. Oh, oh child. I hate yeah. her makeup. I hate her makeup. Okay, anyways, Julia Fox appeared on Wednesday's episode of Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen and hinted that she went on an extravagant date with Drake. When asked about the best celebrity date she's ever been on, Fox described a private jet where she's cuddled, she cuddled with someone who later gifted her with some Chanel bags. At first, Julia shared that she really couldn't say who it was, being coy, but later on after the show, Cohen asked Julia Fox if Drake had taken her on the date, to which Fox responded with a heavy sigh. Maybe. Fox told Andy that with a smirk, uh, shouldn't have given me that shot. So I guess she had a drink. What are your thoughts on uh, Julia teasing that she went on a date with Drake? Al, what do you think about this? And can you see that couple? Can you see him with her? Listen, I... <laughs> Hollywood's got me believing all types of stuff. First of all, I don't find Julia Fox remotely attractive now. Like back in the day, she may have been attractive, but I don't find her remotely attractive. How does this, sorry, everybody, how does this white woman look like that, but bags the wealthiest 
billionaire, black billionaire in America, as well as the number one most talented rapper, wealthy rapper worth 300 to $500 million. How does she do that? And it, is it a trend or something that we're passing around, you know, super successful black men pass around these types for the fun of it? Like what's going on? Drake is way too handsome and wealthy to be chasing after Kanye's secondhand stuff. I, I don't, I'm, I'm confused. I don't like it. This is weird to me. How is she able to do this? All of it is a mystery. Somebody help me out. Q, Claudia, what's going on? Have you been to Hollywood? When you're a white girl like that, you, you, you can get some of the most wealthy and attractive black men, but a black girl gotta be perfect, gotta know how to cook, have no bodies, have everything in alignment, be a god fair woman. But these little skanky looking, dusty, drug addict looking types, they line up and let them find out you was with another celebrity. They line up for it because they want to sniff your drawers. I swear, they are into the girls that have had other celebrity men. I think it's a turn on for some of these men. Oh, Claudia, think? who wants to sniff your drawers? All of them. <laughs> Not me, girl. <laughs> you don't want to sniff no girl's draws. So come on. <laughs> what you think, Kim? You think Julia um, Fox? You know what? Me? Julia Fox makes me hopeful in reincarnation. Like, I want to come back privileged it and medi I want to come back privileged and mediocre in my next life just to get a feeling of it. I mean, because <laughs> if, if Julia Fox and Taylor Swift don't represent the creme de la creme of mediocrity, I don't know what does. And again, and to Al's point, Julia is not even attractive, but let's not forget, you know, I think Julia was just a pawn because let's not forget that Drake and Kanye had that little beef thing. So I think Drake probably entertaining Julia had less to do with Julia and more to do with if you can do it, Kanye, I can do it too. Can we talk you about you wanting to reincarnate as a white oh, woman? Oh yeah, I, listen, to I want to lay know, up with Drake I, I wanna... and Kanye. No, I don't care about Drake nor Kanye. I just want to know what it feels like to be mediocre and privileged. Like that, that's got to be one hell of a feeling. I'm telling you, start taking a look at who these brothers, these successful, wealthy black men date when it's not a black woman, and look at Look at how seemingly easy it is, how low the bar is. And I'm I'm just strictly going by looks because I don't know her personality. So call me being shallow in this segment. Yes, I'm just talking about att attractiveness, right? You would think okay. someone like Drake who has a pick of the litter, but look at all their track workers. Go ahead and look so at them. Then. How, do, how do they meet though, Claudia? Tell, tell me that. Like how do they have how a website called they have an app called Raya that it's like hard to get in. You have to get approved and they don't approve everyone. It's like okay. three black guys on there. And like they, it's very hard to get on there. And it's like a high end um, tender. There's one way publicist hookups, you know, ah. especially these, some of these men that have uh, image and issues with their sexuality. I've had that happen where they'll reach out and say, hey, can you go on a date with such and such? And then they want you to go to the IV or the catch or the place where they know people going to be. It happens all day long, y'all. Can you go this with me to these? Good tea. Can you go with me to these award shows? Can you go so I can look stable? Can you go with me to this event? And they drop you off at the end of the night, and then they go out with who they really want to go. Like, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I gotta write this book, y'all. Anyways, we gotta take a commercial. Go ahead and put your questions in the chat uh, for all of us that we will answer the last segment. We'll be right back with more right after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Don't forget to put your questions, your comments in the chat. I want to just shout out C Bus, whose birthday is tomorrow, one of our soulmates. And you know, we like to show love to our soulmates in the chat. And thank you so much for showing us love in the YouTube chat. Keep those comments coming. We see you. All right, y'all, listen, uh, there's nothing worse than going to the doctor's appointment, expecting to be the center of attention, and then your doctor seems like they have better things to do and better places to be. Instead of listening to you intently, asking you how you feel and helping you along, the doctor is checking the clock. Who wants that? Now, on ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are pa pa patient reviewed. Uh, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Now, when you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all your energy. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Now, using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Now, book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. 
Now go to ZocDoc.com slash T and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C, D-O-C dot com slash T, ZocDoc dot com slash T. Doesn't sound like a great idea, y'all, to kind of get that care you need and, and, and get it easily. You know what? This sounds like a very good idea. And I'll tell you something. I was at the doctor's office one time and I think the front desk, the scheduler called my doctor and she told him something. I guess the book was full that day. And he made a comment like, all right, well, that means we can only spend 12 minutes per patient today or whatever. And I never felt so cheap or whatever. I was like, wow, I've been reduced. And he literally is like, came in and and walked out of the room. And that always stuck with me. So knowing that there's a product out there on the market like this, I would be very interested in that because I want to spend some time with my doctor and not feel rushed or anxious. like And like I'm taking up his time with his important job. So I think this is a very good product that the market will respond to. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what, Claudia, can you tell the, can you tell the soulmates how to assess it again? Cause you know what? I mean, I'm announcing this here. I'm moving to Los Angeles next week, everybody. And one of the biggest concerns that I had was leaving my doctors that are, and have been treating me in New York city for the last 23 years. So I think I'm actually going to use this because going to a new city, not knowing who to use, who's good, who's rated. I think this would be the perfect app for me to find my new round of doctors in my new city. Well, go ahead and get it. That's ZocDoc.com. Go ahead and check them out and let them know that we sent you. All right, y'all. Something else to get into. The uh, luxury fitness gym Equinox is under fire after launching a day-long campaign called We Don't Speak January. Okay, Equinox referred to the month as of January as a fantasy delivered to your door in a pastel colored box. Now, it talks about change. It needs a new outfit before it can begin. Shortcutting, giving up. Now, the gym added... You're not a New Year's resolution. Your life doesn't start at the beginning of the year. And that's not what being part of Equinox is about. All right, what are your thoughts on this new campaign? Q, what do you think about this? Like, they don't want people to just come in just for January and then taper up, I guess. Well, I don't blame them. You know, as somebody who's been unlocking a better fitness self for the last two years, <laughs> I don't like you uh, New Year's resolution gym people. You bring your ass in the gym. You don't know what you're doing. The month of January and February, you flood out the locker room. Blood out all the machines, blood out all the treadmills, can't even get in. You all over the place. You don't put the weights back where they belong. You can't find no parking because y'all on y'all New Year's resolution kick. And then January, February, March. Girl, I didn't even know what the third month was. I had to count it January, February, uh, March. Wow. By the time March rolled around, y'all don't even come to the gym no more. I don't blame them. We don't listen. And they say we're trying to keep our cash flow steady. We're trying to keep our money coming in steady. We don't want y'all shot clock people who come in and sign up, cloud up the gym and don't come back. So, I, you know, I, I feel what Equinox has said. They are speaking from the gym enthusiast perspective. I'm with it. I'm surprised they would do that and mess up their own bag because, like, there's still money that they're getting for people signing up in January. So, but, and their memberships are high. Yeah. Al? Well, you guys know that I'm an Equinox member. I'm an all club access member and know a lot of bit about a lot about the business model. This was absolutely wrong. So I have to disagree with Funky, even though everything that he's saying makes sense. Everybody knows that in the fitness business, the fitness club business is a 30, close to $31 billion business. And 30% of your annual revenue comes from the month of January. That equates for Equinox about $196 million. So for you to snub the month that pays all your bills for the rest of the year is just simply fiscal irresponsible. However, this is a prime example of where the marketing department is not talking to the finance department because from a marketing standpoint, it was a kind of differentiator because Equinox members kind of differentiate themselves from other fitness gym members. And unfortunately, social responsibility, they may, they may get a thumb up, but fiscal responsibility, this is 100% a thumb down and you're messing with your bottom line, which is your business model that makes you operate and keep all the doors is open. Sorry, I can't agree. I'm going to say this. I think their marketing people and their finance people probably know a hell of a lot more about the business than, than we do. So I'm sure that they know, like, you, you want to go to the club that won't let you in. You mm -hmm. want to get with the person that tells you no. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to make business go through the roof because when you can't get in something, no, no, I'm going to go and I'm going to commit. I'm going to pay now for 12 months up front. 
Mm-hmm. That's what I think, because Equinox is already one of those gyms. First of all, if you haven't been in L.A., they have the reputation for being have all the very good looking people in there. And now when they make it hard of you, now you want to get it even more. That's oh, my and to Claudia, stay, and to stay, Claudia, y'all stay on the marketing side. If you make 30 percent of your revenue in your company in the first month of the year, you do not want to cut that revenue stream off. If you make a hundred million dollars your first month in the operating month, you don't want to cut that off. Period. It don't make Claudia, any sense. To your point, to your point, and Al, I mean, could is there a world where maybe they actually will make more because they will attract new people to sign up that says, I don't want to be a part of that group of people that they talk about, they quit. So I'm going to stick with it. So I can Absolutely not, because the membership at Equinox costs over $200,000. So the market that you're actually speaking to is so tailored and so, so, so slim. It's not like you're talking about a membership that costs $19.99, where billions and millions of people are participating to buy it. I'm going to stop you before S&P get us, because I know you said something else. False. You said what? the membership is two hundred thousand dollars a year. No, I said the membership is two hundred dollars a month. New two hundred dollars oh, oh, well, plus you, you, a heard. month. You said two hundred thousand dollars a year. So we okay, I'm sorry. It's two hundred to three hundred dollars a month to be a member at Equinox. That means your your the 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 number of people that you're going after is very slim. Your philosophy or your business model where if it was 1999, maybe that would work, Claudia, but when your population of people and clients that you're going after is so slim because the price point is so high, that's not the smartest thing to do because you're not going to be, it's not like you're going to be able to get millions of people to pay $300 a month to go to the gym. I just think now they're going to commit to 12, pay, commit to 12 months up front. That's what I think. We'll see. To join a gym? You're going to pay $3,000 to join Al, us I just can't, I can't accept that you, Q, or me knows more than the Equinox marketing people. Like, I just can't. Like, I know you brand strategy, okay. but I, I, I mean, kind of think that, I just kind of think that, and it's no shade to you, I just think that they're a successful brand. Like, we can, like, turn our nose down at, but I feel like. <laughs> a with, successful why would they, why, brand. Okay, well, let's see. Why would we they got, lose that we much got, We got the whole year to talk about it. And if we wrong, me and me and Funky will do 200 push-ups right in front of you. Uh, uh-uh, not me, girl. Uh, <laughs> I'm over here quiet. And How I'm about y'all take me to what? dinner? And I'm so quiet, that's why we finna go to commercial. There'll be more TGIF after okay. this. Okay, let's take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to TGIF. It is Friday, so please put your comments and your questions for the three of us in the chat. We'll get to them at the end of the show, the very last segment. It's a free-for-all. Ask away. Okay. Ask away about this, because I want to know what this person was thinking. An intoxicated man was banned from Air India for one month, one month, mm, after peeing on an elderly woman during a flight. Now, in a letter to the flight crew, the 71-year-old woman stated, he unzipped his pants, relieved himself, and continued to expose me to his private parts. Her clothes, shoes, and bag were completely soaked in urine. Now, the crew gave a woman a set of pajamas and disposable slippers. (laughs) <laughs> that is disgusting what are your thoughts on <laughs> how do you miss the whole bathroom don't you have to push the door in? <laughs> whatever, the, whatever the hell that man was drinking I don't want none of them let me tell you something India said bitch we overpopulated we ain't got enough food for the population we got bigger things to worry about than this man peeing on this lady because there is no reason why this man ass is not in prison like I, if he was in the united states he would get at least three to five years like i, I, I just don't understand this man didn't even get probation like how do, he didn't even get arrested man no, for worse, one month worse of than that What's that Q? He deplaned with the rest of the the people on the plane. I mean, pardon my ignorance, because I was born in in the United States. I mean, is that just not a big deal in that culture or in that country? I mean, it it has to be a crime. Exposing your if if exposing your genitals is not that's definitely a crime. Definitely peeing on somebody. I mean, even in the most third world of countries has got, and, and I'm not suggesting India is a third world country, but even in the most third world of countries, peeing on somebody has got to be some sort of assault. 
Of, of course. But you know, the funny the funny thing, Q, is that the flight attendants pretended like it never happened. They changed the woman, gave her pajamas and slippers, put her back in her seat. And she was like, yo, the seat is soiled. Like, can I at least get another seat? They were like, no, ma'am, you didn't pay for no other seat. So, and they were, there were other seats in first class. Again, the reason why I'm asking is the just complete dismissiveness of this whole thing somehow tied into the culture no one, no passengers on the plane did anything. The flight attendants didn't do anything. The police didn't do anything. So why is everyone so comfortable just dismissing this situation? What am I missing? Right. Like this seems like in India, uh, I mean, I mean, it was on the plane, right? So I, I, I I thought they were like deeply kind of religious and you know, when you, there's people that are accused of rape, they they drag them through the streets, you know what I mean? And they don't, they, they hold cows sacred. The fact that they treat cows better than they treat an old lady on an airplane that gets golden showered on the plane is really disturbing to me. Like what is going on? We gotta, listen, we gotta get a follow up to this story. Yeah. For sure. I have a lot of questions. Maybe she deserved it. A 70 year old woman? There's some 70 year old cameras. Kenny. Meet me in the back of the the back of the garage. <laughs> you sick boy. I'm not doing this with you right now. I ain't doing it either. Go <laughs> to the next thing. <laughs> Everyone's already wilding out. It's too early in the year. Recently, Bad Bunny lost his temper and tossed a fan's phone in the water after she invaded his space. Take a look. <laughs> After the clip went viral and Bad Bunny received backlash, he posted the following tweet translated from Spanish. He said, the person who comes up to me to say hello, to tell me something, or just to meet me will always receive my attention and respect. Those who come to put a phone bastard in my face, I will consider it for what it is, a lack of respect, and I will treat it likewise. Who do you think was out of line in that situation, Bad Bunny or his fan? Q? The fan. Really? I say Bad Bunny. I, I, I say the fan. So, so, he, so he, here's the thing. Number one, Bad Bunny, where's your security, right? Because that fan should have never. You're an international superstar. That fan should have never been allowed to get that close to you. However, now I, I do think it was just an excited fan. Um, but let's just take it for what it is. To run up in somebody's face with the phone recording and just be all up in there, it's rude. Okay. Um, it, 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 it's it's just rude. Did he respond appropriately? Absolutely not. But am I somewhere feeling bad for her in the, in, in the absence of her phone? Absolutely not. Oh my God! So I disagree with him. I think I think that was very rude of him to do. There are other ways to dispose of her phone, and he better be glad that he was in in the Dominican Republic. Because if he was in the United States, in the state of California, he would have been charged um, injuring a wireless device. Regardless of whether you gave them permission to record you or record with you, you took the advice. You took the device and threw it. It's the difference between taking the device and handing it back and asking her to stop, but he took it and he threw it. Intentional destroying of a wireless uh, phone is a misdemeanor, maximum one year in jail in the United States. I agree. First of all, phones are like $1,000 now if she has an iPhone, and that is that is a lot. And uh, yeah, listen, part of being a celebrity is having your privacy invaded. It is part of the gig. It really is. And he could have said, hey, chill, relax, or calm, calm it down. But to throw your phone, what if she had no other way of, what if she didn't have her numbers backed up? What if she had no other way to contact her ride? Or like, like oh, yeah. Just, just, just anything. Problem. Like, ima yeah, imagine more, someone. That's more the reason that whole should have been protecting her phone and it should have been in her pocketbook. <laughs> No, and not that man. Come on, you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I don't, you know. Come on, and, my humble. Come on, and, and, and Claudia, you you've been in, in the spotlight way longer than I have, and I'm on the F list. Like people tend to forget sometimes that people in the public eye are human. And again, I, I agree. He did not handle it right, but he had a human reaction in that moment, and I'm not gonna knock him for having a human reaction. But like that's a fan that she's like she's clearly a fan of his who's excited to see him. It's I don't like feel like no fans <laughs> today. I'm trying to go to Red Lobster. <laughs> well, that's a great way to start losing your fans. I will say every time I meet someone that wants to take a picture, I engage. Yeah, I take it. I'm very kind, and I just feel like that. I think nowadays, that's nice. I have to hear them say, "Oh, where's Funky? Where's Clark? But you know what? I, I will say this: that the record hit a little different. 
that that recording me without asking hit a little different. Like I was at Publix one day getting the sub, and when I turned around, the girl had her phone like this and was recording. It just hit a little different. I, I hear you. In in, in a in, in a, a place like that, you're doing your business. You might be buying some embarrassing products, but you're out making an appearance. You're out. You're out. You're probably just leaving a show. And everybody's around yes. you running on the street. She's not the mm -hmm. only person that's invading your space. I wish someone would throw my phone. We're going to fight. Be over. All right, right. y'all, we're going to take a last commercial break real quick so you can get your questions in the chat. Uh, go ahead and leave your questions for us, and we will get them, and we'll get to as many as we can in the last segment. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF. It is Friday, so we will answer your questions right after this last quick story. Okay, in the spirit of the story we talked about in India with the girl getting peed on, let's do one more Indian story. A grieving husband in India paid over $3,000 to have a company create a life-size silicone dummy of his deceased wife who passed away from COVID-19 during the pandemic. Now retired civil servant Tapas Sandilaya shared that she passed away alone in a hospital as Tapas was forced to isolate at their home during India's second wave. Uh, now uh, Tapas' late wife sits on the sofa in her favorite spot covered in gold jewelry with her hair pulled back, which is normally combed by him. Would you guys pay money for a silicone version of your significant other? Um, whoever wants to go first. Well, let me just tell you really quickly, Claudia, you made a mistake. It wasn't 3000. It was actually 30,000 for the silicone, um, figure. And the thing that creeped me out was the fact that he did this cause he likes to comb her hair. But then again, there is something kind of, you know, sexy about not sexy, um, endearing, right? He loved her so much. He didn't want her to go. He recreated her so that he could continue to love on her. I don't know. You know what? I'm going to change my stance. I've been saying all year. I would before say anytime it's a rich black man, Al Reynolds will take their side. <laughs> now we know if it's a rich Indian man, a rich Spaniard, Ooh, you know. yes, if it's anything, yes, he is going yes. to defend them in their weird fetishes. <laughs> Q, what do you think about this real quick before we get to these questions? You know what? It, it, it's not for me. It's weird. If anyone of y'all would have told me y'all got a damn mannequin, one of y'all ex-lovers sitting up in there, I'm probably not coming to your house and I'm going to look at you crazy. <laughs> but you know what? He not hurting nobody. He ain't bother. He ain't. He ain't bothering nobody. And if it, if this gets him through, um, and like I said, he ain't hurting nobody. Then, then let him have it. You know, people grieve differently. Um, and and it it, it 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 make them feel good. Now, you know, um, is it a sex toy? Q, you think? I'm down just about to say. I hope he ain't hunching that lady <laughs> or whatever. And if he <laughs> is hunching, I hope he ranch it out real good because it'll get molded there. <laughs> You know, you don't, and then you be something in your living room be stinking, smelling like decomposed corpse, and it's that damn dog you got in your wife, um, smelling like water body. Okay, we, <laughs> let, let, let's get this question. Before we go, oh, okay, I'm getting a correction that it is 3,000, not 30. We don't, oh, okay. Okay. Is All she right. sure? Yeah, honey. They yeah, it in the script now. now. Okay, hey, before we go, we want to give a show our love to our fans in the chat and open up the floor for them to ask us anything. Are y'all ready? Let's do it. Ooh, ooh. All right, y'all, we only have three minutes, so we got to go through these fast. Al, incognito. Yes. Al, do you like to get eight out from the back? You yeah, asked me that last week. They love to know this. They keep asking. Oh, I, I love the fact that everyone is very interested in my sex life. Quick, 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 quick. Only quick. If, <laughs> Eight out from the, I, I don't think I've ever gotten eight out from the back, but if it's a hot situation, maybe I'll try it. So you yeah. got eight out from the front? <laughs> <laughs> you got eight from the back. Yeah, you know, I, I, I like, I like, I like okay. all sex. We, we got to so. keep go ahead, this going. Claudia. TT Thomas, 5287. Funky, will you go the whole year without getting banned from Instagram? Probably not. <laughs> okay. I'm trying, but probably not. Okay, CSJ Chicago, Claudia, do you get upset with Q because he's a commercial police? Uh, it gets on my nerves sometimes, but I know he's doing it because we got to go to break. But he be trying it. He be trying no, to come. No, 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 no. Tell people the truth. We have a, on our platform, we have a thing where the producers talk to us and it's each one of our jobs to hold each other accountable. So if Claudia is in the middle of a story, she may not see that the producers are telling us to go to commercial. And because I'm over here idling, I see it. That's why. All right. Carolina Dog says, Al, do you have a new man out in L.A.? Oh, hell no. 
Okay. He got a new um, client. He got a new client. Y'all know how to ask for. Uh, EJ, question for Funky. How many women have you been with in your lifetime? Uh, probably nine or so. Oh, okay. A little darling with the big story. Question for Claudia. What celebrity do you have the most tea on? Oh, go away. Ooh, that's a good... I, I got to get back to you on that because a lot of them, a lot of them. I've been around. I've seen a lot of stuff. Oh, damn. What else? Um... Oh, TJ Jicky says, Allie, you hooking up with them men's in Equinox locker room? Uh, no. <laughs> he take them home. <laughs> well, first of all, a lot of the Equinox members don't don't look like us, so. Oh. Um, okay, Ray Morrow, Funky, uh, which bar do you frequent so I can bump into you? Yeah, I don't want you to off. bump into me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, is there any more in here? I know we had a lot more questions. Oh, we gotta go. I'm trying to find one more. Uh, sorry, y'all. They're all over the place. Question from Claudia. How are things going since your breakup with KJ? Are you enjoying your dating life? Uh, me and KJ are the best of friends. We are still very cordial and I will always have love for him. We are, we get along just fine. And yeah, I am seeing somebody else and he knows it and we're all good. All right, y'all. Uh, I want to thank my co-host Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for tracks and tales. We will see y'all next week. And that was a fun show. Hey. Hey. Bye, soulmate. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Watch the replay tomorrow.